Welcome to the Words in Season podcast. Thank you for tuning into this episode. We are going to talk about a continuation about how Christ Jesus is our umbrella, that he is covering us with his love. So I want to introduce this next part with the foundational scripture for this series, and it is Song of Songs 2 and verse 4. Let him lead me to the banquet hall, and let his banner over me be love. His love is our umbrella that we're underneath, and then we get to experience things like justification, sanctification, being born again. And this week, we're going to talk about what it means to be washed in the blood of Jesus, that I am no longer guilty, dirty, filthy, but the blood of Jesus has made me clean, made my conscience clean, and now I can stand without any fear of condemnation against the devil, against myself, or against anyone else that would try to bring condemnation against me. So thank you for tuning in to this episode, and remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you. So this week, I want to talk about how we are washed, not washed in a ceremonially clean way like in the Old Testament, where they had to go daily offerings and weekly offerings and yearly offerings, but we have been washed by the blood of Jesus, and now our consciences are cleansed from dead works, like it says in Hebrews 9, and we're going to look at that in a little bit. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the sacrifices that were required. In the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament, just to have any type of relationship with God, God gave Moses certain laws that they had to follow. There were burnt offerings, fellowship offerings, a sin offering, whether it was sin that was intentional or unintentional. And these animal sacrifices, it was required because blood was required for the remission of sin. So that, And God can't be around sin because he's a holy God. So for God to have any type of relationship with the Israelites, there had to be a shedding of, a blo- of blood. And this was a temporary covering. Animal sacrifices at the tabernacle, that as God gave Moses that law, was a temporary covering for sin so that God could fellowship with his people. In Exodus 12, we see the the first, the beginning of this. Exodus 12, starting in verse 1 through 13, it says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. And tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. And if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of the people that are there. And you are to determine the amount of the lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. And the animal you should choose would be a year old male without defect. You may take it from the sheep or the goats and take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where they are to eat the lambs. And that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over fire along with bitter herbs and bread without yeast. And do not eat meat or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, its legs, and its internal organs. And do not leave any of it until morning. And if some is left until morning, you must burn it. And this is how you're to eat it, with your cloak tucked in your belt and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. And eat it in haste, for this is the Lord's Passover. And on that same night, I will go through Egypt and I will strike down every firstborn among people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. And the blood, Exodus twelve thirteen. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So now because of the blood of Jesus, Christ moved into us. And now it's no longer physical blood of animals and goats. But whenever in the spiritual realm, when the enemy sees us, when God sees us, he sees us through the blood of Jesus. And now because of that blood of Jesus, We are healthy, we are strong, we are whole. And what we're talking about today is that we are washed. We are washed with the blood of Jesus so that we are no longer dirty, we're no longer guilty, we're no longer filthy. But when God sees us, he sees us through the blood 
and he sees us as eternally clean. So then going on, so that was God telling Moses, and then Moses told the people in Exodus 12, 21 through 23, it says, then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said, go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb and take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood and in the basin and put the blood on the top of the in the sides of the door frame, and none of you shall go out of your house until morning. And when the Lord goes through the land to strike the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top of the sides of the door frame, and it will not pass through that doorway. And he will not allow or permit the destroyer to enter your houses or strike you down. Now, because of the blood of Jesus, nothing can harm us. There may be things that come against us, but now in the spirit realm, what they see first, what the enemy sees first, what demons and the devil sees first, even what God sees first. He sees the blood of Jesus. He no longer sees Kara and that the fact that, oh, these are all of the sins that she committed in the past. These are the sins she's going to commit today. And these are the sins she's going to commit until the day she leaves this earth. No, God sees us through the blood of Jesus. He sees us as eternally clean. And that is part of God's banner over us. He sees us in a way that we don't even see ourselves. And because he sees us that it extends the grace of God to us so that we are able to see other people in that same way. So now I want to go to some scriptures in the New Testament. The first scripture I want to go to is 1 Corinthians 6 11. 1 Corinthians 6 11. So praise God, we have been washed in the blood of Jesus, and it's something that's eternal. It's something that was once and for all. It's not like the old where they had to go ceremonially every day, every week, every month, every year. And it had, you know, we read about how specific it had to be. It had to be a male without defect, how they ate, the way that they ate. But now, because of Jesus, it's the same for all. We believe with our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he makes us clean. He makes us eternally clean so that we can fellowship with him. That's the whole point. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, but you have been washed. You have been sanctified and you have been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So we have been justified. Our sins have been washed away, which you can look at that in the first episode. In the second episode, we talked about sanctification, allowing that holiness that now is inside to affect our outside, not trying to be holy by rules and regulations. And it says that we have been washed because of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. When we got born again, that's how we were washed. We were not washed with natural blood of animals like they were in the past, but because of the Spirit of God, He washed us and made us clean. So the next scripture is Titus 3, 4, and 5. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteousness and the righteous things that we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit that we have been washed and reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having this hope of eternal life. Now I have hope of eternal life because I have been justified. Why? Because I'm such a good person, because I go to church, because I'm a member of a certain denomination. No, we have been justified because I have been washed by the blood of Jesus. And now I claim that in my life. I need to remind myself because I'm a human being and I live on a natural earth and I live, I work a regular job and I have a house and there's things that happen. And I need to remind myself that I have been washed, that condemnation, that fear of guilt or punishment, that that is not from God because I have been made clean. Does it mean that I never mess up? No, but what it does mean is I know where to go when I do mess up. And I can say, God, you wash me. This is not God-like character. You wouldn't act like this. So I ask you to forgive me. And it's not like he ever left. It's not like he ever moved out of me. But it means that now, ah, that peace is there again. That rightness is there again. Because in my spirit, I'm right with God all the time. 
But as I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart, the Holy Spirit moves in. So I know because the Holy Spirit is in me that says um, in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit testifies with my own spirit that I am a spirit. And because my, my dad is a spirit, I am a spirit. And I cry, Abba, Father. And because the Holy Spirit testifies with my own spirit that I'm a child of God, that means I know I'm my dad's kid. And I know whenever I act in a way that is not like my dad. So I just want to look like him. And I just want to act like him. And I just want to portray him. I want to portray being a blood-bought, blood-washed child of God. And so that's why I go to him and ask for forgiveness, not because he's mad at me or because he moves out of my spirit or because I'm not saved anymore, but because it's just better. It's better for me to go to my, my father and keep my heart tender towards him. So the last scripture that I want to go to is in Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. So now because of the blood of Jesus, we are in a new covenant. We don't have to do those things ceremonially weekly, monthly, yearly, we keep Jesus Christ in front, of, in front of us daily and we remember that daily. And we're going to read here what Jesus Christ has done and how the new covenant is better than the old covenant because it was once and for all. So Hebrews 9 and starting in verse 15, it says, for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. And in the case of the will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it because a will is in force only when that person has died and it never takes effect while the one who made it is living. This is why the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. When Moses had proclaimed every command of the law to all the people who took the blood of calves together with water and scarlet and branches of hyssop, and he sprinkled the scroll and all the people, he said, this is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded you to keep. And in the same way, he sprinkled the blood on the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And it was necessary then for the copies of heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, that the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So you're saying, what is happening here? The tabernacle was a picture of Jesus Christ. All the things that Moses did, they were just pointing to Jesus Christ. There was the blood of animals, but it was temporary. So we're going to read on here in verse 24. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one, like in the Old Testament. But he entered into heaven itself, and now he appeared for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter into heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared. Once for all, at the culmination of the age, to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as people are destined to die once after the face that judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sin of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So this is the news that his banner over us is love, that we have been washed. Ceremonially clean was good for a time, but we are washed by the blood of Jesus and it's eternal. We have now received eternal life. And now every time that I mess up, I don't have to, to Jesus doesn't have to go back on the cross and he doesn't have to die again. But it was once for all. His blood has the power to save all for all time because he was the spotless, sinless, perfect sacrifice for all eternity, for all men who would ever live. So Jesus sacrificed himself. He willingly went to the cross. No one took his life. That's what he said. No one takes my life. I willingly lay it down for the joy that was set before me, me and for you. So he died once on the cross. He died a natural death. He really went to hell. He really rose again and he is in heaven. And it says in this last verse of Hebrews 9, 28, he's coming again. And that is our hope. 
of eternal life is that Jesus Christ is coming back again for, for me and for you, for all those who believe in him. So that is his banner over us, that we are washed in the blood of Jesus. That's the word in season this week. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, you can find more episodes. You can find all the previous episodes to this umbrella, our umbrella in Jesus Christ, this series. You can find this um, on Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube. You can also find it on Anchor FM and on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you. Just one word in season and my heart goes to life.